met Ed before, I believe, haven't you? But yeah, me and Ed, when, when you were 17, we met? 17, yeah, I snuck into a Paolo Nutini after party to hand out <laughs> CDs. Wow. And I, I, it was really, really nice as well, really sweet. That's, and that's nice that you were not. I mean, I well, that was the first thing I asked. It just, oh, I wasn't a dick, was I? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I felt bad because you, you must have been waiting for someone. You're standing on your own, and I kind of just walked up to you and went, "Here's my demo." And you were like, "Oh, thanks." You just say that demo. I oh, know, mate. Yeah. Was it a demo? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was the. Uh, there was probably <laughs> twenty of them. I, I burned them all on my laptop, and because uh, the Palantini gig was going on, and I was playing in Hammersmith around the corner. So I could have had one of twenty of your demo. Yeah. Man. Uh, <laughs> it'll be somewhere. It's all right, I feel the pain. Now, you just became a record breaker. Russell Howard just became a record breaker, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. He beat Frank Sinatra's record yeah. of Ten Nights at the Royal Albert Hall. That must have an amazing feeling. It was a great feeling, and then my mum, um, as ever, brought me down by saying, yeah, old blue eyes, beaten by young wonky eyes. <laughs> so I had a moment of joy and then I was destroyed. Well, because you have got what we call the lazy eye, I believe. I do, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's and technically my mum's fault, so she shouldn't mock me. I can't notice it. How come it's your mum's fault? Genetics, John. Oh, I see, because you... I see. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought maybe she'd done something oh, to you. Oh, you thought she'd blush Well, I didn't know. I didn't know what you, you meant. You've got something to succeed in, like. <laughs> <laughs> so, Russell, you know what? I love your mum. I love seeing the stuff you've done with your mum. I yeah. love when you talk about your mum. And you're going back on... You're going to do some more TV with your mum? You're going back... Yes, can't wait. She's quite a successful individual in her own right now. Her TV appearances with you have put her on the map. She's doing all right, mate. She's doing all right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah well, in fact, when you guys were talking about ghosts, me and Mum stayed in a haunted house in Savannah, and there was a there was a, an Irish girl that had died in that room. Wow. And yeah, it was it was very scary. And I was asleep in that room, and I heard, genuinely in the sort of dead of night, I heard a voice go, Ah, look at you. Ah, uh, look at your lead there. Ah, uh, look at your lead there. Like, and it was my mum under the fucking bed. <laughs> <laughs> and I went absolutely on her. Uh, but it's, it's that horrible moment when it's all caught on camera. Uh, and I go like that, because, and it's like I'm so close to hitting my own oh, mum. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't. Yeah. And you've done a stand-up tour in China as well. Yeah, I've been all over. It's now, just... now, presumably you don't speak Mandarin or... or no, Cantonese? that was the, another question my mum asked me. And yeah. I was like, again, I probably would have spoke Mandarin before I went to the gig. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. It's the first time I've done a world tour. Like, I gigged in China. In America, I made two women laugh in an elevator simply with my face. I walked in, right? <laughs> I walked in and they started... There's two 50-year-old women and they were proper... Yeah, yeah, huge laughs. <laughs> And I said, what are you giggling at? And this woman looked at me and went, Sugar, has anyone ever told you you look like Ellen? And honestly, <laughs> you've never heard it. It was like just <laughs> bouncing off the walls. No, like, you you look I, like... I look like a charming lesbian. I yeah, didn't realise. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did, did you notice there was a difference in the way fans greet you in, in uh, the Asian venues you're playing at when you were in China, for example? Was that different to the UK well, or America? What was strange about the gigs in China is that I did a story ages ago. I met a young uh, boy with cancer and I went to see him, and that clip went viral in China. So to explain the story, I met a 14-year-old boy, and he was watching a clip of mine called Mr Dildo. It was me dressed up. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> as a penis. And he found it very funny, and he was, he was dying, and he was planning his own funeral, and he was really funny, he was really dark, and he was making people go to the funeral dressed in what he wanted them to wear. So he's making his dad go dressed as death, and if somebody coughed at the funeral, his dad, dad had to point at them. <laughs> so I was kind of laughing along. And he said, would you go? And I said, of course I will. And I said, what do you want me to wear? And he went, I think you know. <laughs> and this, this kind of moment dawned on me that I was going to have to go to a, a child's <laughs> funeral oh, dressed as a dildo. <laughs> and I went to see him subsequently. He was in a hospice. And he survived. He lived. It was an incredible story. And I said, will you let me tell this story? And I did it on stage at the O2, and I said, in fact, I want you to come on stage at the end. And he said, what do you want me to wear? And I said, I think you know. <laughs> so he, he came out wearing his cop costume in the whole crowd. <laughs> but because that clip had gone viral in China, I'm kind of walking around. I didn't know this, but people would just go, ah, oh, Mr. Dildo. <laughs> yeah, kind of waving at me, going, small boy penis. You're like, no, no. That's what they shout, Gordon. <laughs> 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 but it took me a while to figure out what had happened. Your material has... I'm, I'm not wrong in saying this. Uh, it's not, not so recent, I suppose, but in the last yeah. four or five years, you've got much more political yeah. in your work. It's still very, very funny. Now, what would that change about, Russell? Well, mostly, I think this summer was a huge time with the election and, like, to be honest, uh, Grenfell was a really big thing, I thought, that when it happened, we were all consuming the news, we were all kind of reading about it and finding out that five grand could have saved those people. 
I kind of thought, God, if you... And a bit like you're doing, Gordon, I mean this sincerely, like, doing a TV show about that and finding out that concrete goes into coke, that's the way to tell people. Mm. So I kind of think, if I'm passionate about something, I can be angry and I can be funny. And I find it a lot easier to write jokes about that now. So, for example, like I found out the other day that there's young girls in England who can't afford tampons, so they're missing school. And yet, our government's spending 500 million on changing passports from red to blue. So if I speak about that and take the piss out of that, more people get angry, maybe it doesn't happen. So oh, that's my thing. Uh, the, the new show you do on Sky, they seem yes. to be giving you a lot of space, a lot of freedom to explore these kind of... Uh, yeah. Is it unusual for you to get that kind of, uh, that kind of freedom given to you? It's a lot easier working there than, yeah, than the BBC. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> and so BBC, they were stamping you down a bit, were they? Well, you just have lawyers saying, can you not say it like that? Can you do it like this? Okay. Can you do it like what? There was, we had, there was a bit that we did last, last time on the show where I wasn't allowed to call ISIS. I said that ISIS aren't Muslims, they're terrorists. And the lawyer went, can you not say... That, can you say that ISIS aren't fundamental Muslims, they're terrorists? And you're like, what, we're going to get a letter from ISIS, are we? <laughs> 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 Dear BBC, imagine my horror at being misrepresented. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so what are you doing now? You're doing the TV show at the moment, are you touring again? I'm doing the telly show and then I've got a, a Netflix special out and then I'm going to have a holiday, going to go on holiday and that's it for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I quite like the idea of what Ed did, that sounded amazing, just wandering off. Breaking your arm? Not that. <laughs> <laughs> Although my sister's husband <laughs> broke both of his arms recently and I was looking after a little baby, he's, um, he's two, and Kerry rang me up, she's like, can you, can you look after Wes? Please look after him. Gabe's broken both of his arms. I was like, yeah, sure. And my brother rang me up an hour later and Jenny went, have you heard? Kerry's got to wipe two arseholes. <laughs> so that was... <laughs> well, it was a fantastic moment in that hour. <laughs> have you heard? Yeah, yeah. Russell, it's great to have you here. Thanks, I, I, the show is tremendous. I really enjoyed seeing it. I feel like this is a weird thing to say, but I feel like I've seen you blossom and grow into a, a stand-up comedian now that one might not have thought you would have been. When you, you... It's very sweet of you to say, look yeah, you. Well, <laughs> it's, like, it's like you're my dad. <laughs> it's great to have you here. Russell Pleasure. Howard, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>